Shalom. All praise and glory to the Creator, the Spirit, the self-existing, eternal One, the Spirit of Truth, duality, the Spirit of Life, duality, the door of life, duality, the door of death, the Spirit, the self-existing, eternal Creator, He holds the keys to life, okay? He is the God of the living. He is the, those that serve the Creator, serve life. Those that serve idols, worship idols, bow down before idols, serve death. Remember, folks, if you read the New Testament and you read all the way through it, you're going to clearly see that the word death is constantly surrounded around Jesus. Why is the word death surrounded around Jesus? Because Jesus died. It's that simple. He, he fell from... Well, Christ crucified, as we've been taught. Let me be clear. that In the Bible, you have two different Jesuses. Okay? You have Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh, or uh, Yahweh. Um, these are all names. Jehovah, Joseph. These are all names for Jesus passed down, except without the letter J, because the letter J was only created and invented about 500 years ago. That's why they took it from the translation of the Hebrew knowledge and broke it down through Greek and then Latin to the English language. You got to understand that our language, English, is a devil speak language. This is why the native people used to say, or uh, the ones that they sell you, Indians, you know, the long hair and stuff on television, um, aren't uh, the, I don't know, what these Indians are, that they cut all the hair off of them. These Indians here, the native Indians, the, all the treaties were broken from the white man. When the white man got here on this plane of existence, they came over and they robbed, raped, pillaged, stole the land and uh, sold you a story, a line of shit. So I'm reading you guys Genesis. We're at uh, uh, Joseph. The famine is in the land. Now, uh, the grain has been taken back to their father, Jacob. They've taken everything and they've told their father uh, now that Jacob isn't, or uh, their son, their youngest son, now isn't uh, Simeon. Hasn't, he, he's still there at the Pharaoh. He's in prison. So let's just pick up and read a little bit here because I can't talk about what I want to talk about until we get there. Now the famine was still severe in the land. So when they had ate all the grain they had brought from Egypt the first time, their father said to them, go back and buy a little more food. But Judah said to him, the man warned us solemnly, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother along with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. Because the man said to us, You will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. Israel, Jacob, asked, Why did you bring tr this trouble on, my, trouble on me by telling him you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us closely about our family. Is your father still alive, he said. Uh, he asked us, do you have another brother? We simply answered his questions. How are we to know that he would say, bring your brother down here? Then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the boy with me and I will go at once so that we and you and I and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. Really? Personally responsible for him? What are the actions of these people? What have they gotten? They've already sold their brother Joseph off to the Ishmaelites. He's in a position to cut their heads off their shoulders if he wanted to. Why? How is he going to be responsible for him? But the story, as we go, it, it, this here, with everything with Joseph, it seems like it, this story with Joseph, everything is right. You see, this prophet here seems to have, 
he hasn't done anything wrong. He just, you know, he's living his life. What was blessed to him from the Most High. He said, if I don't bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you all my life. Blame the blame, blame, <laughs> bear the blame before him? Um, he's already lost one son, Joseph, he thinks. He's lost Simeon. Now he's sending his third son down here. All this chaos is taken. Personally, myself, if I was Jacob, I don't see that he's so old in his years. I imagine he's probably around the same age as I was right now, probably 60 or 70 years old. Doesn't speak out anything about Jacob's health right now. He seems to be in completely good health, man. If this was happening with me, I wouldn't place my son in anybody's hands. I would have got on a cart and traveled my rear end down back to Egypt myself to see about getting my son. And then that would have even turned out even better. So, yeah, so he's going to take on, He's gonna, if something even happened, like what kind of sorrow and grief would that place Jacob in? As it is, if you had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice already. Now he's talking about the first time. I, I didn't, un I never understand this. Like, I always thought, wow, they must be like neighboring cities if he could have went and been back twice but he's talking about that been there and been back twice remember now they've eaten all the grain that they were sent home from egypt with the first time already and that's what he means is we could have been there twice because they wanted to take benjamin back right away the first time and the uh jacob israel wasn't going to allow them to take benjamin with him so they could have been there and returned twice already then their father israel said to them if it must be then do this, put some of the best products in your bag and take them down to the man as a gift. A little balm and a little oil, some spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take the devil the amount of silver with you, for you must return the silver that was put in, your, in the back into the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the man at once. And may God Almighty, bam! Well, who is God in this position? <laughs> Joseph. Joseph is, remember folks, these are um, servants of the Spirit. Remember. The Pharaoh made a comment that Joseph had the spirit of God on him. The spirit of is on you. I can see this. That, that that's what Joseph is saying. So Joseph is the one that's blessing people. So when Jacob says to go back down there and may God Almighty have mercy on you, who well, who would that be? That would be the person that you're going down to see on this plane of existence. Mankind. Now, the difference here, Joseph is a Hebrew, okay? He is in a Gentile land. He is in an Egyptian land. His boss, his ruler, the Pharaoh, is a Gentile. And Joseph is a Hebrew. You understand? This is why they're, that's the difference. They're not saying the Pharaoh now is read in this book as well as God himself. I'm trying to teach you that God is equals 430 in the Strong's Concordance, okay? And its meaning is plural. Well, actually, yeah, it's, uh, excuse me, it's plural of Eloa. Okay, also, Eloa, spelt that way, Eloa, okay, so, this Bible has been so tampered with, 
when the Gentile got their hands on it, they wrote themselves as gods in the Bible. Okay? And in this particular sentence, the only one that could be having mercy on them would be Joseph in Joseph's presence. So when they say God Almighty, they are specifically speaking about May. They don't know that it's his his son. He doesn't they don't know that it's brother, which is wacky anyways. You have several brothers, seven seven brothers that are going there. Not one of the brothers recognized Joseph, but he he recognizes him right off the bat. That's questionable too that none of the brothers would have recognized Joseph, but they don't know that it's Joseph, all right? And may God Almighty grant you mercy before your, before the man so that he will let your bro other brother Benjamin come back to you. As for me, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver, and Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with him, he said to the steward of the house, Take these men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare a meal. Why do you suppose that they use this word slaughter in this particular... Why not? How come the, that Joseph couldn't have just said, You know what? Go and pick up one of the best of the sheep of the flock and prepare a meal. Why did they add the word slaughter here, man? Because it's indoctrination to death. Okay, the Gentiles got their hands on it. Look at the way this thing is being written. Okay, the, the Bible has hundreds of parables say that, that um, slaughter or sacrifice and burnt offerings are, mean nothing to the Creator. That's what it says. So now, we got an issue here, okay? This is a lot of the arguments that take place with people when they, when they speak with me. They're like, well, you, you're just, you know, changing the Bible the way that you want to do it. No, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking out pieces of the Bible that don't sound right to me because this Bible now is a puzzle, okay? It's not a complete puzzle. It's missing pieces from the Bible, and out there are many uh, children of the Most High, the Spirit, the self-existing, eternal, living God, all right? And they all have pieces. God's children, Hebrew, have pieces of the truth on them. Not all of them have all the truth. Nobody has all the truth on this plane of existence. And anybody who tells you themselves would either have to be God or the biggest liar on the face of the earth. And since we know that God ain't man, he'd be the biggest liar on the face of the earth. It's that simple. The men are to eat with me at noon, Joseph said. The men did as Joseph told them and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened when they were taken into the house. They thought, they thought, you know, this is an incredible thought right here for me. Is The man who's writing this book, Moses, a man, Moses was a man, he's not a god, but Moses was a man, knew a thousand years before his time what somebody was thinking. <laughs> Just throwing it out there, man. So Moses knew what they thought when he wrote, We were brought back to this house because all the silver that was put in our back in our was put back in our sacks the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us and slave us and take our donkeys. Now I gotta ask you seriously, does that does that make any sense at all? That he would uh why do you suppose that the brothers are speaking out like this, huh? Because when people do evil things, as sell their brother off, their mind is always carnal, like everybody else is doing evil. Everybody else is plotting. This guy's plotting. That's why. That's why they think everybody's plotting against them, man. Because they've done shitty things. Okay, but yet. They're still spared. 
So they went up to the steward and spoke to him at the entrance to the house. We beg you our pardon, your Lord. So, again, this Lord here is going to be a controller. If you go to Bible Hub, Genesis 43, 20, 43, 20, Take your cursor in Bible Hub, Genesis 4320. Take the cursor in Bible Hub and you place it on the word Lord here. You are going to get a controller. Okay? A ruler. That's why I say that on this plane of existence, there is Lord worship. The Creator, the Spirit, the self existing eternal Creator is the only thing, the only spirit, one spirit, and he moves all things in place. It is to his power and his glory alone that these things all move into place. He appoints, he commands, he directs, he uh, is the one that delegates everything, the creator, the spirit. This the Creator, the Spirit, this is a Lord, the capital L-O-R-D, Lord, is 3068, okay? And this is self-existing, okay? This is what you got to understand. This Lord is the self-existing eternal creator okay there's only one creator folks only one creator so therefore if there's only one creator Satan can't exist if the Spirit of God didn't create any other gods but who's telling us that we will be as gods who told us in the garden? Didn't Satan come in the garden and say to us that surely you shall not die in that day because the Lord knows in the day you eat thereof your eyes shall be open and ye will become as gods. Satan is the one that said we will become as gods. We're not gods. We're creations to God's glory. Everything is to his, crea to his glory. When you go thinking of yourself as a god, you got to remember something, folks. You are going to be... Uh, God, the Spirit, the self-existing eternal one, the living God, is going to destroy all the other gods underneath the earth. That's what it's saying. So I don't think that you really want to consider yourself as a god. I think I may have said it a couple times in my own life, you know? You know, when you're when you're fornicating and you got women throwing your feet at your head, I thought that I was a sex god and all that shit, man. I'm going to pay. So you have one Lord who's 3068 in the, in the concordance, the Strong's Concordance, which is the self-existing eternal creator. Okay, those in the providence of Jerusalem today, look at the word Jerusalem. U-S-A. U-S-A in Jerusalem. And those that are in Jerusalem today are Jewish Okay, they're not Hebrews. They are not. Okay, the Jewish people in the providence of Israel today are Khazar, Nazi Jews. Oh, they're not even Jews, they're Jewish. Okay, now this Lord here, who is the self existing, those in the providence of Israel today, the Jewish people, not Hebrew people. Well, some Hebrew people teach you to as well. I could be wrong there. I'm not perfect. Okay? But they call him Yahweh. The self-existing eternal creator to those in the providence of Israel today have taught you to worship Yahweh. Okay? Yahweh also... Is uh, or Yah is also short for Yahweh. All right. So now you know the difference between the self-existing eternal Creator, the God of Truth, the Living Spirit. Okay, the one that says to worship Him in spirit. This is the one, the self-existing eternal Creator. 
Okay, this Lord here is the one that says, You shall place no other names beside me. Pay close attention to everything that I say. You are not to invoke the other names of gods. Okay, people are scared to say Jesus. I looked up I really looked into this last night about about talking about other gods. If you are talking about other gods and invoking the name as your savior, that is an abomination to the creator. But if I'm saying the name Jesus in contempt that he is not the creator, it is clearly okay to point out that these names of other gods are an abomination to the self-existing eternal creator. It's that simple. So, I was always concerned, you know, I prayed about it, I pray, because I pray to the Lord a lot about everything, you know, and that's pretty much what's come over me. He, in order to let people know that they're doing wrong, you got to tell them what it is they're doing wrong and who it is that they're worshiping that is wrong. And, and sadly, that takes using the name, but it doesn't mean because you're using the name that you're invoking the name as your Lord and Savior, because I do not invoke the name of Jesus at this channel as Lord and Savior, by no means at all, okay? They said, we came down here the first to buy food, but at the, but at the place we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks and each of us found his silver, the exact weight in the mouth of his sacks. So, we have brought it back with us. We have also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put the silver in our sacks. It's all right, the steward, the attendant said. Your God, the God of your father, well, who is the God of Abraham? Who would have been the God of Abraham? Isaac was the God of Abraham. And Abraham was, or Abraham was the God of Isaac. So now you're going back to gods in men's places. Remember, these, <laughs> Satan has jacked this Bible up, man. It makes it hard for you to decipher between those men that are upright. There are no other gods on the plane of this existence, folks. There are no other gods. Okay? So, there's only the Spirit, the self-existing eternal one. The Father has given you treasures in your sack. I have received your... I was the one who received your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The steward, or Simon, depending on how you want to pronounce it, the steward to the men into Joseph's house gave them water to wash their feet and fodder to feed their donkeys. Do you think they're starting to feel a little bit more at ease? They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon because they had heard that they were to eat there. When Joseph came home, they presented to him the gifts they had brought into the house, and they bowed down before him to the ground. He asked them, How were you? How are how they were. And then he said, How is your aged father you told me about? Is he still living? Because it's been a while. How much? When they sent them back home with all that grain, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about carts would have had to have been taken back. Because remember, folks, what's going on? This famine's going on. Jacob has just returned to the land. He has gang loads of sheep, donkeys, rams, he's got servants, he's got a household to feed, he's got a lot of overhead to be taken care of, which is, which is what they're sending for grain, because it's the grain th that they need for the animals, okay? Not that Joseph was starving, the animals would have died off. Then he wouldn't have had food for, for the house. So it was the grain that they were interested in because they needed the grain for their livestock. All right? They replied, Your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed down, prostrating before Joseph. As he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother? The one you told me about? And he I don't know if how old Benjamin is at this point in time. Would have been could somebody help me out here? I'm I think that Benjamin was already uh born at this point in time. So is is Joseph also pretending at this point in time that he doesn't remember Benjamin? Wouldn't Joseph remember his brother Benjamin?
his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. After he washed his face, he came out and controlled himself and said, Serve the food. They served them by himself, the brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who eat with themselves. So everybody, Joseph ate by himself. I don't know why Joseph ate with himself because I clearly that the Pharaoh at this point in time knows that uh, Joseph is a Hebrew. Okay? Uh, so at this point in time, would Joseph be blowing his cover if he sat and he ate with his brothers or is he playing the full role that he is an Egyptian? Remember, folks, uh, Hebrews are black and white. Egyptians are, or excuse me, Hebrews are black. Egyptians are black and white, okay? Egyptians are the Egyptian nations, okay? The nations are all colors, okay? It's just, this is why you got to tell a man by its fruits. You can't tell a man by their color anymore on this plane of existence. You have to tell a man by their fruits. You talk to a man about God. If anybody serves anything other than the Spirit of God, or when you bring up a conversation and speak about the self-existing eternal creator, and somebody tries putting Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad or another name beside God, or worshiping another God beside God, when the creator says that there is no other gods. So that means that there's only us creations. Both Gentile nations and Hebrew nations are creations of the Most High. Don't let it fool you. Don't let yourself be fooled and think that because you are a creation of the Most High and they've got you running down this hamster wheels thinking that Jesus Christ has come to save you, you are the souls, the billions that are going to be used for fuel as the fire. God ain't going to let you guys give you guys a pass. Okay, so all of them ate by themselves. Okay? Okay, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is detestable to the Egyptians. The brothers had been seated before them in the order of their ages, from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other all in astonishment. When portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portions were five times more than anyone else's. That just always gets me. Oh, so they feasted and drank freely with him. Wow, man, I love this story. There, there's, you know, thus far, that since I've been reading and writing these chapters out, man, we're almost through Genesis. It's going to be a milestone to be through the first chapter of Genesis. And um, surely this story here seems to be more involved than even the story of Jacob, even the story of Isaac, any of the stories of the, the forefathers of Joseph. This this story here has a few, there's a few chapters behind Joseph. There's not a bunch of chapters behind these other prophets. So, anyways, folks, I don't know everything about the Bible. Don't claim to know everything about the Bible. I only claim to know pieces about the Bible. What I promise you, I promise you, is I will not try to preach something to you that I do not understand in the Bible. I'm going to write it all down. I'm going to read it. And I'm going to share it. If there's somebody out there that knows more than I do, that's willing to gift me with the information, I am all ears. I don't shut myself down to any knowledge at all. You have to hear the messages in order to discern the truth. The truth is out there, but you got to hear the messages. If you're not, if you're one of those people where there's something screaming inside of you that you want, don't want to hear somebody's message, then more than likely. That's a demon inside of you that doesn't want to hear the truth. It's based that it, that whatever's inside of that flesh suit, its life, its life, its soul is based on lies and deception, and it can't handle the truth. This is why, like the other day, I walked up to a woman and I said to her, I said, "Excuse me," because I could see from across the street she had this hat on and she had the the little sparkly dots and stuff in in the form of a cross. So I walked, I walked up to her and I said, excuse me, I, I said, I see you're wearing a cross there or you're wearing a hat with the cross on it. Are you a Christian? And she's all, yeah, I'm a Christian. Oh yeah, she's all proud and everything. I'm like, well, look, 
I don't, re- I don't really believe that Jesus is God. What one thing could you share with me that would make, make me change and believe that Jesus is God? And I'm telling you, this woman went wacko weirdo on me asking that question. And, and, and I, so I was trying to get her, what's your favorite parable? What, what parable? Show, tell me what parable in the Bible that would get me to, to really turn because I'm, I'm, sn- I'm placing them in a trap, man. I'm snaring because the minute they start pumping out those Christian parables, it allows me to uh, sh- do my part. And what I like to do, the fa- one of the favorite parables that I like to read to people to bring them out of this sleeping, this ghost spell that has been placed over you, the gospel is the ghost spell that has been placed over you, is in First Cor- uh, Colossians 1.15, it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible Father, firstborn over all creation. Jesus is the image of the invisible Father. The question that I always ask Christians, common sense now, you got to use a little common sense here. You got to empty your glass and you really got to think about this. If the creator, the self-existing eternal spirit, the living God of truth, tells you that no one can see his face, the spirit, the creator, can no one can see his face, then how can the Christians have made an image of Jesus as God or anybody, me or, or Mary or my brother Sean? Or anyone that I know, man. How can any of us be the image of God? And then you got the creator, the self-existing eternal creator in his commandments. His first commandment is not to place any other gods beside me. So then I always say, well, if this commandment stands, you're to place no other gods beside me. Then I ask you as a Christian, which one of them made this commandment? Because there is something that is giving a commandment that says, place no other gods beside me. So the minute you add a father and a son beside a spirit, the creator, the father and the son are flesh. The minute you add a father and a son that are beside the, the creator, the spirit, then you have added another god beside the creator. And he's saying, you're not to add any other gods. You can't say that it was Jesus that gave this command because now you're dismissing the Father and the Holy Spirit. You can't say that it was the Father that gave this command because now he's dismissing uh, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But you can't dismiss the Holy Spirit. When I say Holy Spirit, I say W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy, complete, wholeness, the wholesome of life, both good and evil. The Creator tells you He created good and evil, folks. 45.7 45.7 tells you, I am the one that create good. I'm the one that creates evil. I'm the one that lifts from the ash heap. I'm the one that makes rich. I'm the one that makes poor. I'm the one that kills. I'm the one that destroys. I, 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 I. A thousand times the Lord is saying I. You don't hear no we in there next to the Lord. I teach the truth. I've learned the truth. I'm going to go to my grave spitting videos out the rest of my life. I'm 60 years old and you will see videos until I can't breathe anymore, until I can't get out of bed. Between me and God, I'm going to write this entire Bible on the board. This is what I have promised the Lord that I would do. If he lets me live long enough, I'm going to write this entire Bible on the board. And then this is why nobody comes inside of my room and says, hey, you know, you got to read the whole, you got to read the whole chapter. Now, I'm writing the whole chapter down for you, folks. I'm pointing out the inconsistencies. I'm showing you the things that don't really make sense. I'm helping you to understand that the Gentile have got their hands on the Bible and have clearly turned the prophets, the creator, the self-existing eternal one's prophets into, you know, what I would call rapists, murderers, uh, pedophiles, uh, effeminates, People that want to lay down, children that uh, get their father drunk and lay down with them. It's all horse shit. you got to wake up from the delusional state that you've been placed in. If you're fornicating, the Creator has put scales on your eyes. If you're sleeping with multiple people and you're taking on semen inside of your 
vagina, you are in your this mean if you're a prostitute especially and you got men that are climbing on you, you are a demon and the people that you're laying down with are demons. You are both demons inside a flesh suit serving your flesh. You're doing it for money and he's doing it because he has the money and he needs a piece of ass. They're rude, they're crude, they're nasty, they're vile, okay? And if you don't stop doing that kind of behavior and repent from the creator and stop your fornications, your lying, your stealing, your cheating, your covering, your whoremongering, your laying down with people, committing adultery, and then the worst thing of all, committing idol worship, you're going to burn forever. It's that simple, man. Much love to all those children that serve the Creator, okay? One spirit, folks. Serve one spirit, okay? Do so and be redeemed by his hand that he pull you by the fire. If not, salute to you. This is White Raptor News Ministries. Shalom.